Welcome to Ritual Skill Modeling. This is part three of the Morpheus Battlestar Galactica Colonial Raptor Scale 1.32. In part two, I um, assembled the cockpit. In this part, I will be putting the cockpit into the fuselage and button up everything up. So let's jump into the build. So as you can see here, I'm using Rebel Up Class 17 African Brown. Um, as explained in the other videos, this is going to be the main color. So I'm just putting on the first coat onto the starboard side of the fuselage. And once one side is done, I'm going onto the rear. This is where the engines get attached. And same again with the bottom. And finally the top and the door. Now you don't have to be um, accurate on this if you don't want to be. It's a spaceship. So there's going to be different variations in the colour as you go along. Um, if you are weathering it, it's sometimes better thought to paint it really well. Um, but don't worry if you can't paint it that well, um, it will actually add to the feel of the model. So going on to the outside parts now, and the dish antenna is getting painted in Revolver Aqua 93 Copper, and that's just for the actual dish part. And the main body is XF56 Metallic Grey by Tamiya. And I'm also using this colour to paint the nodes on the um, bottom uh, part of the fuselage like I did on the wings, uh, just to stand out on detail really. So once that's all done, I'm just using my pencil to mark out some panel lines. Now the recess points are a little bit tight on the uh, mould here, so I'm just placing in my blade and twirling them around to um, enlarge them slightly. I'll just make it easier when I'm putting it together. So putting it together, um, first of all I'm putting in the um, inner, inner capsule for the cockpit and um, workstation behind. It does sit on a little platform at the bottom of the fuselage and the inside. It can be a bit tight though so make sure you got the correct positioning uh, before you close it up. Also if you're having it on the stand, um, sorry on, on the um, its own legs, you may want to put a little bit of weight in so I'm just using a bit of plastic here to put it in. However, you have to be careful with plasticine on model kits. They can conduct heat, which can break open the seam. So if you are using uh, plasticine, make sure it's completely bonded tight. So I'm now just putting in the uh, support brace above the um, cockpit here. And once that's in, um, it's time to uh, put the two fuselages together. I should point out, in the end, I did actually take off the support brace and put it back on. This has nothing to do with the kit. This was because of the little tie bar I put in for the cargo net. I had to slightly readjust it. Now saying that, the um, fit is extremely tight as I've said before and you really have to put this under a bit of clamp to pull it all together. So as you can see I'm putting in my F clamps here and I'm just drawing the two fuselage parts together. Careful you don't put it too tight though because you don't want the seam to buckle under the pressure. So here again I'm using Tamiya's XF6 metallic grey just to paint in some details. There's no hard and fast rule and um, what colour you want to do these um, is entirely up to the builder. I'm moving on to the canopy now. It's quite a big canopy and I'm using Revol Aquacolor 43 medium grey and I do this freehand. If you if, if you watched any of my other videos um, you, you can see me doing um, canopies freehand. I just prefer it that way. Um, the secret is, is to long short strokes as you're painting it. If you do go over your lines, don't worry, once the paint's dry, you can rub it off with a cocktail stick, a matchstick, something like that, and it just rubs away any excess paint. So you just work your way around the uh, canopy, decide which way you want to go. Obviously it's a little bit easier on large canopies such as this. Um, once you have the two canopies, you may find it a little bit more difficult. I just use a smaller brush. Um, I tend to go over the lines a little bit more on those canopies, but the matchstick uh, technique does work. So now it's time to put on the um, bottom of the model. Now the uh, location points, the recess points, uh, as you can see they line up perfectly and it should just click in. You may want to put it under clamp just to hold it together. I did, but it wasn't really that necessary. Next to go on is the front panel. Uh, I should say when, when you build this, make sure you put on the bottom part first. It's because um, how it's um, engineered each part um, sort of rests on a lip so you need that bottom plate on first so the lip can rest onto each part. 
and it's the same for the rear, just uh, connects into the um, recess points. Um, you may need to put a clamp on this one just to, to get it in tight. And for the final process of this stage, it's the uh, top of the um, Raptor. Again, that just pushes in. Now, I did have a tiny bit of gapping issues. Um, after looking at it, I don't think it was the kit. I think it was me. I may have put the um, fuselage under too much clamp and it's um, sort of boarded slightly. So I had a little bit of gap. It wasn't huge, but it had to be dealt with. So I'm using my own filler and this is a just melted down sprue with normal um, uh, cement for model making. Um, you just uh, make it up yourself with a little bit of glue, let it um, melt down for a couple of days and it's ready to go. The advantage is it sands down really well and of course it acts as a bonding agent too. Next is the door and uh, there's a little window here but I'm using my formula canopy glue uh, to create a window so I'm just putting a little bit on my match stick. it's a bit thin this one so um, just be careful of your one thing it's still workable but you just have to be a little bit more careful and what this does is it creates a clear filament over the gap you have to put some in and just throw it until the, the gap is closed now the advantage of this is um, because I'm having the door open I didn't want to see a big lump of clear plastic inside this little recess um, I just wanted the window so this is a this technique will give me that. It's not as clear as, as a bit of uh, clear uh, perspective, but it still does the same job. So as you can see there, I'm just carrying on, putting a bit of glue on a cocktail stick and drawing it in until the gap closes. Now it depends on how big a hole is, how long this will take, but um, it doesn't take that much uh, longer than waiting for a piece of canopy to glue anyway, uh, to dry anyway. I, I would recommend it. Um, have a play around with it if you've never done it before. But it's quite a good way to create windows if you've lost a canopy, or, or well, not a canopy itself, a, a piece of window on, say, a, a side of a 747. And that will dry clear. So, next thing I've said with all the little parts uh, for the front end, this is the no sensor uh, array that I'm just uh, building up here. And it's a uh, just four little units, uh, two main ones, then um, a, a probe that goes on each side. Now there's not really any location points for these uh, two little probes that go on and unfortunately um, they're, they're quite small and my fingers are in the way so you can't re really see it. Um, but once you get it into position it just lays on the side and um, just maneuver them into a position that you, you're happy with. So I've tried to zoom in a little bit so you can actually see it here. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, it's, uh, this, the fill is dry, so I'm just taking a coarse sanding stick here and uh, filling, uh, filing it down. I will then go into um, a rough sanding stick, then a medium and a fine, and eventually work it down to a smooth finish. And then once it's sanded down, uh, I just repaint those areas. Uh, as you can see, I didn't actually need uh, much uh, filler at all, um, just tiny little parts. The sanding air is more prominent because of the size of the sanding stick I was using. But don't be afraid to sand down and repaint. So it's back to the sensor array and I'm painting the tips in red water colour 90 silver um, just on one side, just a tiny little dot. That's all that's required on this uh, probe. And for the other side I'm using Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey. This is more like a, a sort of a bracket between the two probes. Uh, I'm not sure what it's for. Um, but it's there and I'm using the same colour to paint the right side sensors. Uh, this is just a, a little plaque with two uh, pieces uh, John, uh, sticking out uh, that need to be painted. So the, the, the base is painted in the African brown colour and the stems are painted in the metallic grey. And this is also the case on the nose gear uh, assembly. There's uh, two little raised parts at the tip of it. That I'm just painting in some detail, so I'm using the metallic grey. Now, just for bits of detail and colour, I'm using Tamiya's X23 clear blue, and there's just a, a little uh, dots of colour um, on raised areas uh, around the nose section. And the same again with X25 clear green, and then with Tamiya's X24 clear yellow. 
as you say, these are just little dots I'm putting on. And finally, X27 clear red. Now, you don't really have to do this. Um, I just wanted to do it just to add a little bit more detail onto the unit itself. It's all down to personal choice. So it's uh, time to uh, place them on. Now, each part does have its own location of this resource point. They go in fairly easy. You will need a good pair of tweezers because some of the parts are quite small though. The addition tenor does have a large recess area uh, to fit into this node at the bottom here and it just lays on, just push it on you shouldn't have any problems. Then the, the landing gear itself, uh, there's four little uh, recess points that this just clicks into. Um, just about got it on camera there, just at the angle that I, uh, I had putting it on. But it fits in perfectly. And then it's time to put in uh, all the uh, little probes. There's uh, two of these um, at the bottom here. Again, each have its own little recess point. And then the little blade antenna thing uh, just pops on. Now, you want to make sure these are completely dry before you handle your uh, model again because uh, you're putting them on now. Um, there's a good chance she'll not come off if you're not careful. The sensor array just uh, fits into this groove uh, very nicely, it just pushes on. You don't have anything else to do with it, just a little bit of cement, push it on, and that's all. There's a little dome that you have to make up here, it's uh, just two halves, um, they, they fit together. Make sure that you clean any part, any contact points or paint before you do this. You don't want it sliding everywhere and ruining the mould. I used a, a couple of little clips just to hold it in place while I was trying. And fitting it was very simple. As you can see the two points there that it just uh, fits into. You may want to widen these a little bit um, depending on how your model is. I had to widen mine slightly. And then the last to go on the top is uh, another uh, blade antenna. Again, the um, the area that it fits in is, uh, is quite snug and it just places in quite well so you don't have to worry about it falling down, it will sit on its own. So next up, I'm going to be painting the um, piston rod that holds open the door. So first of all, I'm using River Color 43 for the base of it. And then uh, once that's painted in, I'll be moving on to River Color 90 Silver uh, for the actual mechanical part of it. Uh, there's two little uh, bands that I'm painting in the metallic grey colour and then once that's done I'm going to bring this part to a close and um, a lot of it needs to be uh, dried overnight so it's a, it's a good time to stop uh, here uh, now so I'm just finishing up the the, um, the the piston so if you haven't done so already why don't you check the um, other parts of this build or indeed uh, the rest of the builds on my channel subscribe to the channel for um, upcoming updates, um, particularly this one. Hit that like button, leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.